Hello, bonjour, and welcome to your new Bonheur Private Wines video. Let's continue exploring the wonderful world of wine and talk about one of the most popular type or style of wine, one that's become hugely trendy around the globe in recent years, one of my personal favorites as well from having worked with it in Bordeaux and in New Zealand. Let's talk Sauvignon Blanc so you get to know more intimately what this popular grape is all about. I'm sure you will want to have another look into and perhaps a different taste at what is Sauvignon Blanc after watching this video. I hope so. The more we know about wine, the more we enjoy it, right? So this is your essential guide to understanding Sauvignon Blanc. Let's go. My fellow wine-loving friends, Julian here. Before we get started with the video, there's something that you have to know. This video was made possible by the Bonner Private Wine Partnership. The reason I work with them is not just because it's been called the most unique wine club in America, might be part of the reason, but because they truly love the wines that they choose, and I do too. You can check them out through the link in the video description, and I'll tell you more about them at the end of this video, but let's get into our works video for now. Sauvignon Blanc was born and bred, as you might have expected given the name, in France. It's a French grape originally, like Pinot Noir, Syrah, Merlot, Chardonnay, or Cabernet Sauvignon, and many, many more. But Sauvignon Blanc wasn't born in Burgundy, or Bordeaux, or the Rhone Valley, like many others. It was born in perhaps one lesser-known area, the Loire Valley, home to the longest river in France, which flows over 600 plus miles, that's very long for France, and home also to some of the most stunning castles in the country as the kings of France used to have their summer residence built in this area, or residencies I should say. So because it's historically a region of kings and aristocracy, well the Loire is also home to the French savoir vivre and to some of the good wines, obviously like Sauvignon Blanc. Other famous grapes that originated from the Loire Valley include Cabernet Franc and Chenin Blanc, for example, for some of the most famous ones. A fun fact is that Cabernet Sauvignon, the iconic grape from Bordeaux and world wine superstar, was invented or bred by crossing two grapes from the Loire, Cabernet Franc, a red grape, and Sauvignon Blanc, which created Cabernet Sauvignon. So Sauvignon Blanc is the mother of Cabernet Sauvignon, while Cabernet Franc is the father, if you wish, or the other way around, there's no gender with grapes, of course. For a quick little extra detail within the Long Loire Valley, or the Long River, Sauvignon Blanc is said to have originated near the famous appellation of Sancerre, which is rather high along the Loire Valley, in the Upper Loire, is how we call it, around the centre of the country rather than the estuary of the, of the river, which is by the Atlantic Ocean. So high up Loire origin for Sauvignon Blanc. If you want to taste the roots of Sauvignon Blanc, the purest expression, get a wine from Sancerre or nearby Puy Fumé or Quincy, this area. Those are unoaked which is important to really taste the purest character of the grapes to experience the quintessential aromas of Sauvignon Blanc. What we love about Sauvignon Blanc is that it's got a lot of very distinctive aromas and flavors. It's what we call an aromatic grape as opposed to a neutral grape variety. So what are those typical aromas of Sauvignon Blanc and what makes them distinctive and distinguishable from other grapes. Well, Sauvignon Blanc has a rather fascinating spectrum, let's say, of expressions that can vary quite a bit depending on the climate, whether it's a warm climate or a cool climate. It is essential in its expression to know that Sauvignon Blanc is quite grassy. It smells like fresh cut leaves, so cut grass if you wish, with fragrant notes of citrus as well. A typical descriptor for it is grapefruit. It's also quite citrusy, understand lemony, some lime as well. Take the smell of a lemongrass basically with a little touch of fruity grapefruit and you have essentially described the core of Sauvignon Blanc's 
typicity. Unlike Chardonnay, that can sometimes be quite neutral, where well, Sauvignon Blanc always is very fragrant. On top of that, the flavors of the grapes are quite zingy and acidic to the palate. There's a mineral crystal-like acidity in its taste as well that's very distinctive. It's generally made dry in a crisp, refreshing style which accentuates the grassy, lime-like, aromatic profile. So if you've tasted a few Sauvignon Blanc wines before and you've paid attention, it's possibly the easiest grape variety to identify even when tasting it blind. You smell it Ah, yeah, you know it's Sauvignon Blanc. It's actually a great fun exercise, tasting exercise to taste blind. Sauvignon Blanc next to a Riesling, Pinot Grigio, Pinot Gris or Chenin, for example, and try to pick up which is the Sauvignon Blanc. We're covering the labels, of course, so you don't know which one is switch. It's fairly easy a grape to identify with this unique, grassy, citrusy, grapefruity expression. Try it. It's very amusing. That said, Sauvignon Blanc, uh, all the wines are not exactly the same, or it would be really, really boring. The terroir it is grown on does make a very important difference as well in the detail. Otherwise, it would just be boring. All great grapes reflect the terroir they are grown on. That's a big part of why they are great and appreciated. So let's talk about Sauvignon Blanc around the world. Sauvignon Blanc is the eighth most planted grape variety for winemaking globally, although it tends to be made as a varietal wine more than other grapes, meaning not blended and bottled by itself with the name of the grape on the label, and for this you have to bottle the grape for by itself. Grenache or Tempranillos tend to be blended, so you don't see those on wine labels all that much, even though they are planted more than Sauvignon Blanc. So of the grapes that you'd actually see the grape on the wine labels of, Sauvignon Blanc is probably around the fourth most popular grape variety behind Cabernet Sauvignon Merlot and Chardonnay. So extremely popular style worldwide. France is the homeland of Sauvignon Blanc and it's of course the biggest producer and the Loire Valley makes most of it. As I was saying, wines from the Loire Valley tend to be the purest expression of the grape. They're dry, they're crisp wines, often mineral as well with that finesse, a subtle and mineral expression that is not easily matched elsewhere. Still in France, Bordeaux, not far from the Loire, really adopted Sauvignon Blanc as well and makes some of the best wines in the world, either in a crisp, refreshing style, quaffable style, but also sometimes they barrel aged them for more depth and complexity. The white wines made from the top Bordeaux chateaus, actually, and Bordeaux makes a fair bit of whites as well, the top chateaus make wines often with a lot of Sauvignon Blanc blended with a more neutral grape that is called Sémillon. So Sauvignon Blanc does make some of the best wines in the world, including in Bordeaux. Outside of France, Sauvignon Blanc has known a huge boom in popularity over the past 20 years or so because it's a zingy and refreshing, aromatic and playful wine. It's perfect as an aperitif with entrees, with fish obviously, or even with your mains for those who like white wine. So it's extremely versatile, perfect for summer, for parties, perfect for all occasions really, so many, many just love it. So it's experienced a global success. The demand for Sauvignon Blanc has ceased to increase over the past two decades, so plantings have followed. New Zealand has been the champion at this, so much so that it's the most iconic wine coming out of New Zealand. If you know New Zealand wine, it's going to be Sauvignon Blanc. More than 70% of the country's wine output is actually Sauvignon Blanc, which is rather telling. New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc is the grassier expression of the grape because of the local cool climate and high UV radiations as well there. If you love your white extremely, extremely fragrant and very grassy, almost tasting like freshly cut grass in many cases, well, try a Kiwi Sauvignon Blanc, you, you'll find them delicious. If you ever travel to the UK, chances are you will find Kiwi Sauvignon Blanc everywhere in restaurants and wine shops as well. They drink tons of it in Britain. So do the others as well. Australia also drinks more Sauvignon Blanc than they drink their own local and beloved Shiraz Reds. Sauvignon Blanc is just more refreshing 
and easier to drink, so the others absolutely love it. So Australia planted a lot of good Sauvignon Blanc as well in their cooler climates, and they don't have that many of those to quench their local thirst for the grape. They love it. Like many, Chile in South America makes a lot of it as well, also in their cooler areas, like to the very southern Patagonia uh, region. I don't think Chile has distinguished itself with a very specific style of Sauvignon Blanc like New Zealand has. They are good, refreshing and excellent value Sauvignon Blanc wines there compared to Kiwi or French that can be quite pricey but Chile is a really good value alternative to find a good solid Sauvignon Blanc at an affordable price. And then of course is the US where Sauvignon Blanc is also within the top 10 most enjoyed wine styles and California produces most of it. One thing about Sauvignon Blanc like most grapes is that it can taste rather quite different depending on the climate. So in very cool areas in California similar to what you'd find in New Zealand it's zingy and crisp. In California that's areas with strong oceanic influence like certain parts of the central coast, EJ, Santa Barbara County, or the Sonoma coast if we're talking about North Cal. While where it's warmer, wines develop more tropical characteristics, notes of lychee or melon, mango on top of the citrusy characters or grapefruity notes that we've talked about, which can also be quite interesting to have those tropical notes and richer you know, spectrum of flavors, but perhaps arguably a little stickier and heavier, but perhaps also deeper. That's how from the Central Valley of California or hotter areas like Napa Valley, the style of Sauvignon Blanc is different, richer, fuller, more tropical. Plus, and that'll be our last main style of Sauvignon Blanc here for today, there is the famous Fumé Blanc, a typical American style of Sauvignon Blanc invented in America and only enjoyed in America. Sauvignon Blanc aged with a strong influence of oak barrels to make it even richer, more buttery, way smokier as well. It's a little bit of an oddity in the world of Sauvignon Blanc, but that doesn't, you know, Sauvignon Blanc doesn't get matured in oak much at all around the world generally. Fumé Blanc is a very American style and I actually personally like it, but you need to enjoy oak to enjoy that Fumé Blanc. In short, or maybe not that much in short, this was your essential guide to Sauvignon Blanc, really all the main facts that you need to know about it to claim to be a real connoisseur, which now you are. Job done for me, I hope you enjoyed the video, I will see you soon in the wonderful world of wine. Cheers. As I was telling you, this video was made possible by this wine club called the Bonner Private Wine Partnership. With the Bonner Wine Club, we're releasing weekly wine education videos so you can become an expert and get to know everything that I know about wine. I'm sharing everything. So head over to their channel and subscribe to get your weekly fix of awesome wine content from me like this one and even further. We're going deeper with this series. Then if you want even more access to newer wine videos from me and learn even faster plus receiving extraordinary wines that we select from all around the world, well, consider becoming a partner of the Bonner Wine Club. Link in the video description, founded by Will Bonner. The partnership is a small group of wine lovers who have come together to import to the US excellent small batch wines that might otherwise get completely overlooked by large importers. A great opportunity to get access to small batch wines. Right now you can get your hands on three rare extreme altitude red wines from Argentina from some of the purest, highest vineyards in the entire world, way up in the Andes Mountains. No middlemen here, no additive packed supermarket wines, no inflated costs. Make sure to check out the link in the video description to learn more about this exclusive wine club and get more wine videos. But for now, yeah, I'll see you soon in the wonderful world of wine.